Hi, William here, and welcome back to another 5-Minute Cyber Session, where we take a complex cybersecurity topic, explain it, and break it down for you in 5 minutes. Today, we're going to be talking about the principle of least privilege, how you can apply that in your network, and how it can have tremendous impact on the security posture of your organization. Before we dive into today's video, be sure that you subscribe and you hit the bell notification so that you're notified as we release future videos. And one more thing before we get started, and I need you to leave a comment below and let me know what you would like to see a future five minute cyber session on. So let's put up five minutes on the clock and get started. The principle of least privilege is widely discussed in information security. And in this section of five minute cyber, we're going to break down some of the key concepts of least privilege that you should understand and implement. But before we get too deep, here's an analogy to help you understand a hotel. We actually used the same analogy in the last episode when talking about Kerberos, but there's some crossover. When you go to a hotel and you get your room key card, it only gives you access to your room and any amenities that you need access to, like the breakfast room, the exercise room, the pool, and so on. However, a hotel cleaning staff member who works on floor five, they probably have a key that gives them access to all the rooms in the storage closets on floor five. But that key might not get them into the room and you're safe. The same would be true for a cleaning staff member on floor three. Do you see how that access or that privilege increases? Now, a maintenance worker who works on all floors may have a key with access to all rooms on all floors. Each person in that analogy has the least amount of access that they need to do their job. For some, like the maintenance worker, that access is more than others. In its most simple form, the principle of least privilege is a methodology or a mindset around granting access in an information system. Every user or application is given only the minimum access that they need to do their job and no more. Typically, access is granted based on the function of the person or the application rather than basing it on just the who. So just because someone is a vice president, that does not mean that they need complete access to everything in the company to do their job. In fact, senior business leaders actually should have as little access as possible. And here's why. They are often targeted by bad actors and limiting the access they have means that even if an attacker were to compromise their account, the attacker would not have the keys to the kingdom. Least privilege doesn't just apply to files and data either. It encompasses the entire network design. So in your network, apply the principle of least privilege or access mentality across the board. Segment your network so that each zone or department has access to as few other segments or zones or servers as possible. VoIP phones could be on a different network segment than printers. There's not typically a need for these two types of devices to communicate. John Kinderberg has outlined a list of criteria that should be used to determine access in a zero trust architecture methodology that he has published. The first criteria is what? Precisely what data or systems does the individual need access to? What is the minimum amount of access that they can have and still do their job? The second criteria is where? Where is the data or the system located? So for example, if you have an HR office in Germany and the US, do the US employees have access to the data on the German server? The third criteria is who? Which employee is it? Remember, each employee should use an individual account, not a shared account. It's bad practice. The fourth criteria is how. How will the data be accessed? Will the files on the server be accessed via FTP, maybe an SMB file share. The fifth criteria is when. When does the individual have access to the data at that location? Are they only allowed to say use the VPN during business hours? The sixth and the final criteria is why. Why does the individual employee need access to that particular data or system? For example, the HR manager needs access to employee records so that they can do their job. Accounting does not. And that's the basic premise of the principle of least privilege. You want to restrict access so that you can restrict when a bad actor does compromise account, what does he have actually have access to? If you implement the principle of least privilege, you use these six questions, these six access control criteria, you will greatly harden your security architecture and the posture at your organization. Be sure that you subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment and let me know what you would like to see a future episode of 5-Minute Cyber On.